the point prevalence of dementia and Parkinson's disease is about 30%. That means if you would go out today and identify all patients with Parkinson's disease, three out of 10 would have dementia. The cumulative prevalence is another issue. So as the disease advances and as patients get older and disease duration is longer, up to 80% of individuals with Parkinson's disease would develop some form of cognitive impairment and majority of them will fulfill the definition for dementia. Uh, it would be fair to define the typical dementia syndrome in Parkinson's disease as a dis-executive syndrome. The features are different than those of Alzheimer's disease. There is more attentional impairment with fluctuations. Visual spatial impairments are earlier than you would see in Alzheimer's disease. Memory impairment is present, but it is a different profile than you would see in Alzheimer's. It is less of a limbic hippocampal type of amnesia than a secondary type of memory impairment. Another feature of Parkinson's disease dementia is it's associated with a number of behavioral symptoms such as hallucinations and delusions and apathy is almost universal. There have been many, many risk factors suggested to be associated with Parkinson's disease dementia. But if I would single out two, it is the age and severity of the disease. So these two combined would provide about 10 times higher risk for dementia to be developed in Parkinson's disease. That is, older individuals with severe disease would have 10 times more likelihood of developing dementia as compared to younger individuals with less severe disease. Um, there are many other factors described. There are some genetic factors which may predispose individuals to develop Parkinson's disease dementia. And some Mendelian forms of Parkinson's may be more prone to develop dementia, such as those uh, carrying a heterozygous GBA mutation. And some may be less likely in uh, developing dementia, like individuals carrying Parkinson mutations. The diagnosis of dementia in Parkinson's disease is not any different than diagnosing dementia syndrome in an individual who is not Parkinson's. So you first have to make sure that mental impairment is not due to other confounding factors you have to exclude systemic diseases and conditions, such as, for example, hyponatremia, dehydration. You have to exclude adverse events of drug. The usual culprits in Parkinson's are anticholinergics and sometimes dopaminergic agonists, which can cause hallucinations. Once you exclude that these are not present, or once you correct them and the mental impairment is still there, you just check if more than, cognitive, more than two cognitive domains are impaired, that is what you need for the formal definition of dementia. You have to check if behavioral symptoms are present, and eventually you have to make sure that these mental symptoms by themselves are sufficient enough to impair daily life. If these conditions are fulfilled, you can diagnose dementia and Parkinson's disease. In 2007, we have described formal diagnostic criteria for Parkinson's disease dementia, and it would be useful to consult these to make the diagnosis. Once you diagnose dementia in Parkinson's disease, again, confounding factors should be excluded, and if present, they should be treated before you decide introducing medication to treat dementia, first move is really to make sure that there are no confounding factors. Then one has to decide if treatment is necessary for this individual. In early stages, it may not be necessary because one have to keep in mind that sometimes 
medication you introduce to treat mental symptoms may be detrimental for motor symptoms and vice versa. So the first decision is, should I treat this patient? If the question is yes, um, it is recommended that one starts treatment with a cholinesterase inhibitor and the worldwide registered cholinesterase inhibitor for Parkinson's disease, dementia, astigmin. If that is not tolerated, one can also consider another cholinesterase inhibitor such as donepezil. So this is the main same, mainstay of treatment for Parkinson's disease, dementia. And if needed, one can also treat symptoms. One can consider non-tricyclic antidepressants for depressive mood, for example. One can treat REM sleep behavior disorder or sleep disturbances. One can treat psychosis if necessary. And obviously, one should certainly avoid classical neuroleptics. Well, cholinesterase inhibitors were the first treatment modalities recognized and registered for Parkinson's disease dementia, but their efficacy is modest. At best, we can have 15 to 20 percent improvement from baseline. That obviously is not sufficient. It is better than nothing, but we have to opt for better treatment modalities. So our dream would be to find disease-modifying treatments which would halt cognitive impairment where they are, and eventually a dream of all neuroscientists to reverse them. But that seems to be a bit far away from the reality at this time.